please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. National rating agency Moody's has upgraded its ratings on India's sovereign bonds. The rating upgrade from B double A3 to B double A2 comes after a gap of over more than 13 years. The last upgrade was seen in 2004. So, what does this upgrade necessarily mean? For global investors, India is now a more credible borrower. There is lower risk involved if they were to invest in the country. This upgrade puts India at par with countries such as Italy, Spain, Colombia, Philippines, Oman, and Uruguay, among others. Now, that's not all. Moody's has also changed its outlook on India from positive to stable. So, what exactly led to this upgrade? Moody's believes that continued progress on the economic and institutional reforms will boost India's growth potential. Moody also believes that the reforms momentum will help reduce government's debt burden. The 2 lakh crore recapitalization plan for public sector banks got a thumbs up from Moody's as well, which believes that this move in mitigates risk in the sector. However, Moody's has also raised the red flag over the debt burden that has been seen. This, according to Moody's, is still a constraint on India's credit profile. We reached out to the biggest voices from the government, the top bankers and a host of market experts on the impact that this move will have on India's economy and the outlook going forward. This is uh, an upgrade which has really happened after 13 years. And uh, we welcome this upgrade. We believe that uh, it is a belated recognition of uh, all the positive steps which have been taken in India in the last few years. I don't think there's a comparable story in, uh, at least in Indian history, I cannot see a comparable time, even if I look at 91. And even in the world economy, very rarely have uh, we seen in one nation, in a short span of three and a half years, such transformational changes. I mean, we've almost been able to change the way this country thinks and works in a short span of three and a half years. This is a welcome development, uh, but uh, we also feel uh, it's long overdue because you will recall that in the economic survey, we compared India's rating with, uh, say, China's, and just from a general relative perspective, we felt that uh, the rating agencies had not recognized India's um, underlying macroeconomic situation. Uh, so that's uh, welcome. Uh, it's also, I think, a recognition of uh, the actions that the government has undertaken, GST, bankruptcy, MPC, and all of that. It's a recognition of, the, of a long series of uh, um, uh, reform measures that have been done uh, uh, under Prime Minister Modi, uh, which included, of course, the bankruptcy laws, the cleaning up of the banks, and more recently, the recapitalization. Um, then, of course, the GSP. Um, so, you know, it's an accumulation of a large number of uh, measures. So it's uh, an acknowledgement of the systemic reforms which have come about in India as a result of various steps taken by the government. I think there is a certain consistency mm -hmm. in uh, the global perception mm -hmm. which is developing about India. And it comes close uh, on the ease of doing business reports where India has been uh, considerably upgraded. It is because India has signaled very clearly that fiscal consolidation is important mm. that this upgrade has happened. Mm -hmm. That's the causal direction. Mm -hmm. Because of this, I don't think it's going to have any effect on a decision that the government has already taken, mm -hmm. which is that the fiscal consolidation exercise will remain. Well, the who's who across the government's face speaking to CNBC TV 18 on the upgrade. Now, the biggest beneficiaries of the move from Moody's was the banks. The Nifty Bank Index was the top gainer, and that essentially drove both the Sensex as well as Nifty in trade today. So here are some of the country's top bankers on the significance of this move and how it could benefit the economy in the near as well as the long term. We deserved it much earlier. And rating agencies always take their sweet time and they take three months, six months to keep analyzing and see what happens if they are ready to upgrade and some negative thing happens, they'll again delay it by three months. So I think it was long overdue. And I always feel that the rating agencies have not been fair on India. 
because particularly the last year, year and a half, the number of reforms, and these are transformational reforms. Absolutely. These are big bang reforms. These are not incremental reforms. And uh, these have been executed by the government. And um, on, on, on these grounds, they should have done it much earlier. The economic reforms program which the government has initiated, so after, say, a period of pain, uh, the results are now started to show again. So it proves that point, and uh, the government's fiscal prudence itself, it gets a thumbs up. I think this is a very well-deserved recognition of the structural reforms that have been undertaken by this government over the last couple of years. It is also very heartening to note that Moody's has taken cognizance of India's higher growth potential and the increased economic resilience as compared to the other countries in our rating cohort. To fix the fundamentals, even if they cause short-term pain, and that's what gives you the trigger to go forward. Uh, in many ways, if I have to summarize, I would say actually that this upgrade is only a reaffirmation of uh, the changing mood and confidence that you can see in the economy today. This is great news for India that India is finally getting recognized in terms of being a stable economy and it's a long-term positive. But India has to do a lot more to get up the curve. This is a clear good signal that the world is uh, noticing India's uh, move towards stability. And I think India should continue down this path. I think the opportunity ahead is even more. Action then, the last day to welcome Modi's rating upgrade, but the euphoria tapered off towards the end. The Nifty ended with gains of close to about 70 basis points, and the Sensex also ended at a similar range. The Nifty Bank, though, outperformed today and closed the day with gains of about 280 points. Midcap index also closed with gains of about 200 points. Let's bring in Anuj Singhal to understand how sustainable this rally is. Anuj, uh, bulls clearly had a field day, if, if not a spectacular day. Well, uh, the, the Moody's uh, news clearly lifted the mood, but uh, towards the end, there was some profit-taking as well. So some sheen was taken off because the follow-through was missing in today's trade. Uh, uh, maybe because of fresh worries on bond yields, the currency also, uh, you know, losing half the gains, uh, maybe a bit of uh, oil price move again in late trade. All of this and global move uh, sort of dampened sentiment a bit, but still it was a good day for the bulls because you still made a higher high and higher low. The bank nifty made a new lifetime high in trade today, even though that cooled off in late trade. In terms of stocks that gained today, HDFC, ICICI and Cipla were the top gainers. Auto stocks did well, so Maruti, Tata Motors, Aisha Motors, all higher. Uh, on the losing end, you had IT stocks, so stocks like Infosys, Tech Mahindra and TCS were all lower. Uh, apart from all the Moody's news, of course, today's other big news was listing of HDFC Standard Life, and that was a good listing, and it lifted sentiment across the sector as well. And in the FNO space, we had big gainers like Adani Enterprises, DLF, and Canfin Homes. Uh, so the jury is out on whether today's move means the negativity is entirely uh, out of the system, or uh, is this market still sell on rally? That's something that, of course, we'll find out for now. Uh, the Nifty has respected 50-day moving average and has moved on from there. Okay, fair enough. Let's see if this rally continues next week. But meanwhile, we spoke to the biggest market voices on the last trade, Rakesh Junjunwala, Valla Bansali, and asked them about what they think of the rating upgrade by Moody's. Here's what they had to say. Boost investment, including foreign investment and foreign flows. In fact, foreign uh, direct investment already has been very high in the last year and this year too. And FPI also have already breached all the limits in, if you see, in bond market, corporate bond, and GSEC. So it's already, it will get, definitely get further boost. I think first, it will allow India as a government to borrow at lower rates. There will be a lot of participation of a lot of funds who, by then mandate, can only invest in countries which have a certain rating. Okay. So a lot of pension funds will be allowed to invest in Indian debt and also in Indian equity. It has come at a time when fiscal deficit, budget deficit, all are, you know, under pressure. And uh, therefore, sensible investors may not react immediately. Mm -hmm. But those who already had a long-term view, mm -hmm. they get a boost that, yes, I think uh, we were betting the right horse, and they'll continue to invest more. 
is a major boost to India's electric vehicle push. Toyota and Suzuki have signed a memorandum of understanding to produce electric vehicles in India by 2020. Now, in a statement released by the companies, Suzuki says that it will produce electric vehicles for the Indian market, while Toyota will provide the technical support. Ron Banerjee is here with the details. Uh, Ron, how will this work and what's the timeline, etc., that they have pointed out? Well, this is a very ambitious alliance, uh, to say the least, actually, because what, what the two companies have essentially said now, remember, in February, they had entered officially into the alliance, and now they have come up with the details. And as per which, as you rightly mentioned, while Suzuki will be producing the cars in India, the technology of which is going to come uh, from uh, from Toyota. And it's understandably so because Toyota is one of the world leaders as far as hybrid technology is concerned. And therefore, the focus of this alliance will essentially be on, on electric vehicles. And the first set of cars the two companies will be rolling out uh, by the year 2020. Why this is important uh, is because both the companies will also be investing a lot of money in creating the back-end infrastructure, which will include setting up infrastructure as far as charging facilities are concerned, also to find out ways uh, which are find out ways to dispose of batteries uh, uh, in a in an environment friendly manner. More importantly, I think I think what the, what the two companies have today said is that they will be they will be sourcing all the uh, critical components for electric cars, including uh, uh, electric motors, locally from India. So expect a lot of investments to come in. But it seems at this point that Maruti will not be making the investments. It will be Suzuki parent uh, which will be making the investments along with Toyota. But they have not given us the exact no um, what the right. amount is going hmm. to be. But clearly, uh, you know, we Maruti has been saying uh, this for a long time. Uh, they are now going into the electric game in a big way because uh, they cannot ignore what the government is doing as far as EV mobility in the country is concerned. Fair enough.